shoes. No, I'm wearing shoes. Did you just grab her for just one second? Mm -hmm. Hello. Oh. It's Hi. so wonderful to meet you both. I'm so excited to chat with you today about the drop. Thank you too. Love your backdrop. <laughs> this is the production's going. I know. I need your oh, thank, yeah. you. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, okay. So first of all, my first question is for you, Anna. So your character Lex is someone who is kind of on track to do all of all of the things you're supposed to do. She's very mm -hmm. aspirational. She has a healthy relationship. She has a you know a close knit group of friends. She has a successful business, and she's mm -hmm. on the way to making a family. And then. Mm -hmm the drop happens, right? And right. suddenly this whole internal can of worms is opened up and she kind of has to confront what it means to make a decision like that and, and how impactful that is. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, something I really loved in the script was the idea that, and what you're touching on, I think, is like the expectation also of, you know, women often to like, you're just going to want a baby you know, this sort of limited thinking of like, you, you're going to want a baby. And then in this day and age, it's also like, well, and you'll work full time and you have to be perfect, of course. And as all mothers are and, and parenthood in general, you know, not just motherhood. And so I love sort of, she begins on that trajectory and then she drops someone else's baby <laughs> and it drops away like that. She's, she's dealing with, with the, questioning of like are the societal expectations and the ex expectations of myself what I really want which then impacts you know your character negatively and then they have to grapple with their the issues in their relationship but I don't know I just found that really compelling and refreshing to read a script mm -hmm. about that yeah absolutely absolutely and and I, I think this does a really good job of kind of speaking to these very complicated and mm -hmm. ask you know parts of a relationship over long periods of time you know yeah. the love story doesn't end happily ever after there's people change they grow and I think that right. this is a an interesting view at that like in your mm -hmm. case Jermaine your character Manny your life also totally changes in that moment you know all, in a flash your perception of the person who you were married to changes and your view on what that future looks like can you talk a little bit about sort of the impactfulness of that for for Manny impact as soon as uh the baby is dropped impact yeah and the way she gets know, down it's, it's like hercules like, so brilliant. Um, or thor like boom yeah his world shatters as soon as that baby is dropped uh and his world was perfect leading up into that moment he didn't yeah. want to go to that vacation um, he tolerates her friends because uh, he loves her, and uh, he, he he tolerates a lot, honestly. And I think that drop, unfortunately, that baby had to get dropped for him to figure that out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it was um, it was definitely kind of like a challenge trying to internalize all the craziness going on in the. Oh man, it was so much, so much going on. Uh, and I feel like um, Manny is. To this day is probably still trying to figure out that vacation and that moment you know nothing's going to be figured out you know and that you know by the end of the perfectly. film yeah not perfectly yeah. it's not a pretty ribbon that's being tied at the end of the movie they're still mm -hmm. they're still you know they love each other to the point where that like, they still are trying to make things work and so um it's going to be uh that's what love is right like it's just going to be you know making sacrifices and dropping babies and you know, it's, trying again, trying again, failing. Yeah, again. she might drop another baby. Who knows? Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's going to happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, all of the, my fellow, like my friends who are mothers were like, oh, this is terrifyingly relatable because we've all dropped babies. Right. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many people have interviewed us and being like, you haven't dropped a baby. Yeah, like, like, I'm it's, judgy, like, like... It, it's actually happens a lot. Yeah. And that was also refreshing about the script. It was like, let's talk about things that nobody's talking about, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you kind of touched on this a little bit about how like, I mean, these characters are like you would I would largely describe them as like self identified liberals, but like even in that space, um, mm. maternal ambivalence is totally still taboo to the point where mm -hmm. Lex, you know, she can't even like um, consciously engage with it. Like it's her body that's yeah. sending up all these signals, totally. which I so super awesome. connected with. 
yeah. <laughs> was that something Me that too. spoke to you? Yeah. Can yeah. You I mean, it's that? interesting because I've, I, I remember being in daycare, carrying a baby doll around and pretending to read to the older kids. Like I always had this feeling that a lot of people don't have, and I say that in a positive way of wanting to have this child. And yet when I was pregnant, there was also the feeling of like, there's like an alien inside me and there's something, you know, connecting to the child and reminding, you know, guys, you get the ultrasounds and you're like, that looks like a skeleton devil. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't like, and I, and now I'm like questioning everything, you know? And, yeah. and so there's, there's, there's the fear, there's the, and I, and I like always wanted to be pregnant. I always wanted the, that bump and that, you know, I didn't think I'd grapple with feeling a loss of what like my old body looked like or, or feeling like I was sharing something that I never thought I would share with someone else that I always want. Anyway, there was just like all these complex conflicting emotions that I didn't anticipate. And if, um, I think, yeah. And so having that happen in a different way within the movie was like very relatable. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So Jermaine, my last question is for you. And it's, um, you know, I really appreciated Manny as a character. I think that one of the things that this film does really well within that character is that it, it flips thing characteristics that are so often gendered in a way that is not necessarily reflective of real life, but the way that we tell stories and that he is the one who is self-sacrificial for his partner's dreams. He's the one that is more in touch with his emotions. He's the one that mm -hmm. really wants that family. I want to know for you how it felt to get to play a different, to represent a different kind of masculinity on screen. I love you, by the way. Thank you. I love uh, you. <laughs> that's cool. Um, that's, that's, that's definitely why I wanted to play the character. Um, I've, uh, I was, I've always just kind of wanted to do things differently as a father and as a man. Uh, I didn't want to repeat cycles. So I've always uh, felt the same way about the roles I wanted to do. I didn't want to keep doing the same thing over and over or things that were expected of me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as a black male actor, you know, I, I, did, I didn't want to do that and continue to do that. So when uh, the script or the scriptment came, um, you know, uh, came my way, it was, uh, it, I, I, I read it twice and I was just like, man, I've never seen, you know, this, this character on screen before. Um, and it, and it, it didn't read funny. Like he, he's not the funny guy, right? He's not, he's just, you know, the, the center of the storm, right? So I was, um, I was uh, more intrigued to kind of be as still as I could in this sort of film. There's just to react. And uh, it, it was an exercise, honestly. You're so good. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate. It. Thanks, Anna. Um, it was a, uh, it was it was truly something I, I wanted to just kind of experience um, and and just be a part of. I, I've always wanted to. Um, I've always been appreciative of uh, silent films and um, mm -hmm. films that don't that that say less and and show you more. And. Mm -hmm. um, I've uh, I wanted to kind of just exercise that muscle a little bit more, and uh, I, I felt Moni, Moni, <laughs> I felt Moni mm -hmm. was uh, was the perfect sort of character to uh, kind of portray that that want that need that curiosity that I've always want you know had. Yeah, I think that really comes through. And I agree with Anna that you were excellent in it. You both are very great in this. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. I've had so much fun and I and I know people are really going to love the drop and I can't wait for them to get their eyeballs on it. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you.